The Mad Hatter's tea party was in full swing. <laughs> sneezed the rose, which was dreadfully allergic to itself, burying Alice in petals. Opposite her, the Hatter waved a slice of bread. A toast! The Hare shouted, Duck! And threw a mallard at the Dormouse. Perhaps I oughtn't have come, thought Alice, when a pot began ringing loudly and rudely interrupted her. Tea time! As if on cue, the white rabbit appeared. Oh, 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 I'm late! I'm terribly late! Oh dear! He deposited a stack of books in front of the hatter and rushed off before anyone could offer him tea. What are those for? Consumption, of course! What else does one do with good books? Snorted the hatter, generously buttering an encyclopedia. You can't possibly eat that. Nonsense! I devour at least one good book a day. Delivery is free, you know. Their range is most humongous. The rose agreed as she poured over some Tristram shandy. This plot needs thickening. They watched the hare sandwich jams, apricots, strawberry and traffic between two slices of bread. Across the table, the dormouse dunked the rum diary into his tea, hiccuping drunkenly, and then fell into a stupor. Such an appetite for knowledge. Poor Alice was terribly confused. Oh, good books. Oh, goody two shoes. Smiled a ghostly voice, and the Cheshire Cat appeared. They sell books, deliver them for free, and then give every cent they make to the poor. Give money away? Are they, are they mad? The Hatter hid under the table, for he was terrified of the unhinged. And Ravens dropping writing desks. What a turvy, topsy world, thought Alice. I should never have had that pipe with the caterpillar.